so we met Mighty Minnie, the soil microbe, our soil superhero. Um, but she isn't our only soil superhero. So hopefully throughout this conference and after these presentations in this session today, you'll really see how cover crops are also some soil superheroes. So during my time with you today, um, we're going to work to understand how cover crops can increase water infiltration to the soil profile. We're also going to explore the science behind why cover crops are well known for their ability to prevent soil erosion. How many of you have told another person that cover crops can prevent erosion effectively? Seeing some nods, some hands. Yeah, it's probably one of the most cited benefits of cover crops, um, but today let's really go into that and unpack it and see what the science says about it. And then last, we're going to hear what some farmers say about these topics and how things are working on their farm. So um, I'm going to step back for a second and just define the challenge that soil erosion presents. I took this photo a couple years ago when I was flying back into Columbia, Missouri. And um, it was a beautiful summer day. The sky was clear blue with a few clouds. And I was looking down at the landscape, and I noticed that the Missouri River was looking pretty brown. Um, and this wasn't surprising because the Missouri River is known colloquially as the Big Muddy. But still, this, I think, uh, it really made me think about soil erosion. Um, and, and the fact that soil erosion isn't just a local challenge, but a more regional and a global challenge as well. Because as we all know, the Missouri River flows into the Mississippi River, which flows into the Gulf of Mexico. And in the Gulf of Mexico, we are facing huge problems with Gulf hypoxia. Um, and unfortunately, a large source of that is nutrient um, and sediment runoff from fields in the region like the one I was looking down on from my flight. Um, so luckily for us, we have a solution, um, which is in cover crops. So in this photo, you can see a rye crop planted, um, and then on the other side, some bare soil. So Cover crops can be a really effective tool for combating soil er erosion, um, but we're going to explore how that happens. And they're also really effective at all of these other things. I know we saw Rob Myers share with us the Swiss Army knife about how useful cover crops are. But again, today we're really going to narrow in and focus on erosion and infiltration. So to do that, first let's talk about what the science says. So to answer this question, what are cover crop impacts on soil loss and water infiltration? I did a literature review and synthesis of about 35 scientific sources, so not comprehensive, but a good overview. And there were about 20 species of cover crops represented in this um, analysis. For infiltration, the study showed that across the board, there was a median increase in infiltration with cover crops of 92%. This was comparing cover crop trials to trials in which cover crops were not used. And there was a mean increase of about 134%. So you can see that there was a range in the studies, um, but that, like Tom touched on a little bit in his talk, can be um, explained by the fact that the studies were conducted in different regions with different practices um, and just different uh, systems were going on when these studies took place. Some of the studies also looked at the impact of cash crop residue on infiltration. So, you know, cover crops are great, but what's the impact of residue alone? Can it impact infiltration? And what they found is that soil surface cover by residue alone increased infiltration by a median value of 61%. So it was effective at increasing infiltration, uh, but we're missing a piece here. We're not seeing those numbers we saw with cover crops earlier. Um, and I think that's attributed to the fact that residue can't work alone. You need living roots on the ground to really create the pathway for water to infiltrate into the soil profile. So building on this idea of the importance of roots, let's explore how cover crops can improve infiltration. Well, they prevent soil surface sealing. They protect the soil surface from those intense raindrop impacts that we saw in, I think, Jim's presentation, and prevent the soil surface from becoming impermeable. 
They also improve soil aggregate stability, soil macroporosity, and available storage water capacity. Basically, they help the soil act like a sponge. Thank you, Jim, for the prop. Um, and so the importance of aggregates, you know, an aggregate is a tightly bonded group of soil particles, and by grouping together, they create pore space through which water and air can move through the soil profile. So that's very important when we think about infiltration. Cover crops also feed the soil biology, including earthworms, which as we've seen, earthworms are really effective at creating channels in the soil through which water can move. And cover crops also reduce soil compaction. The radish is a really effective cover crop at reducing soil compaction. And because of the, the way that the roots penetrate the soil layer, it really allows water to enter. One study in particular looked at no-till corn production in Maryland. Uh, they conducted trials with and without cereal rye as a cover crop over 13 years with samples taken in both January and June, so at different stages in the season, and water infiltration was tested up to seven centimeters into the soil profile. What they found was that with cover crops, water-stable aggregates increased by 20 to 41%. So again, those aggregates in the soil were present, they were increased with cover crops, and they were water stable. So when the soil was saturated with water, those aggregates were going to stay in place and allow that pore space for water to continue to enter into the profile. Additionally, water infiltration during the cover crop growing season increased by 94 to 462%. That is a huge range. Um, the authors of the study noted that there was a drought during the last sampling year, and they think that might have affected the cereal rye growth, which could have led to that lower value on the end of that scale. But another interesting thing that they found is that the impacts of the cover crops lessened during cash crop growth. So uh, I think the big takeaway from this is that we really need good year-round living cover, residue <coughs> coverage, and root growth to promote these benefits and achieve these goals um, all year, even during cash crop season. So with increased water infiltration, we're reducing the amount of runoff, right? The amount of water running over the soil, which also leads to reduced erosion risk that the water, uh, by entering the soil profile, isn't going to pull soil particles with it. Um, and so to extend on this idea, I want to talk a little bit about erosion now. So across that literature review I did, the studies showed that there was a median percent reduction in soil loss of 82% when cover crops were used, with a mean value of 78%. So not as much of a range as with infiltration. And the studies also looked at different, the effects of different cover crop species on erosion. So as I talk about these, uh, think a little bit about the growth you see from these different types of cover crops. So non-legume cover crops, like cereal rye, were found to reduce soil loss by 30 to 100%. So when they grow well, non-legume crops, especially cereal rye, grow fast, and they get a lot of ground coverage, a lot of good root growth. So that might be why they're so effective, you know, 100% reduction in soil loss. That's great. Legume cover crops, like crimson clover pictured here, uh, reduce soil loss by 40 to 70% compared to no cover crops. So still effective, a little bit less than we're seeing with uh, non-legumes like cereal rye. And I think that's probably due to the fact that unless you're planting grassland organs, uh, fixation clover, which is a behemoth, um, Legume cover crops don't really see as much growth, especially with the roots, as you'll see with cereal rye. And then I didn't have actually many studies with brassicas, but there was one that looked at mustard and found that it was able to reduce soil loss by up to 82%. Um, and so this picture kind of shows some really good growth of the mustard cover crop, which probably contributed to its preventing of erosion. One study in particular looked at winter wheat production in the Great Plains over five years in a no-till system and used a variety of cover crops. Um, yellow sweet clover was one that they didn't have a lot of success with, so after the first year, they stopped using it in the trials. And what they found was that by replacing fallow with cover crops, they were able to reduce soil loss by 38 to 81%. That's huge. 
And again, in this study, they noticed that the impacts of the cover crops lessened over time. So when winter wheat was planted, the impacts on erosion um, went away. And I think that this illustrates an important point, again, that we really need living root growth and biomass coverage of the soil all year long. So how are cover crops able to prevent erosion? It all kind of boils down to this idea that they reduce raindrop, dra raindrop impact and the risk of soil detachment and transport. They do this by, like I said, encouraging rainfall infiltration to the soil profile, which reduces that runoff. They also cover and protect the soil surface from erosive forces. So when you have surface residue, instead of bare soil, you're really protecting the soil surface. Um, the cover crops slow water flow on the surface, so they make the intensity of that water flowing over the surface a lot less, which reduces erosive risk. And the roots anchor into the soil profile and hold the biomass and soil in place. They really sort of enmesh those soil roots or soil particles and prevent them from detaching when faced with erosion, uh, erosive forces. So some of the studies also looked at the impact of tillage management alone on uh, erosion. And the, what they found was that when conservation tillage practices like no-till were used, you would see an 89% reduction in soil loss as compared to conventional tillage practices. And this is pretty good. Um, but again, I'm going to argue that I think that living root growth is, is pretty critical to this as well. So, um, to extend no-till into including cover crops will probably be the best management choice for preventing soil loss. So we've heard what the scientists say. So what are the farmers saying? What's working for them on their farms? I talked to Ray Gasser in Iowa. I'm sure many of you know Ray. He's pretty well known in the, the agricultural community. Um, he farms 5,500 acres in Iowa in a corn and soybean rotation with no-till management. And he is planting 2,500 to 3,000 acres of cereal rye in, in a cover crop on his farm. And I asked him, you know, you're at so many acres of cover crop, why aren't you doing all of your 5,500 acres? And he said that his biggest logistical challenge was time. He just doesn't have the time to get to all of his acreage. So um, it's definitely on his mind, but it just hasn't been able to happen yet. Um, and he started with cover crops in 2010, so he's been doing it for a while. Um, but he also uses terraces and tile drainage on his fields. And what Ray has noticed since he started planting cover crops is that he sees much less erosion on his field, fields, even though he's already in no-till management. Um, his terraces and the, the channels in his in his fields don't fill up with water anymore because there's so much infiltration going on because of the cover crops. And if he does see water in his fields, it's not muddy. It's not muddy at all. It's pretty clear. Um, but the biggest impacts that Ray is seeing happen during extreme rainfall events, which Ray will tell you are exceedingly common for him on his farm, and his story is not unique. In Iowa, the, so this graph is from the National Climate Assessment, and it shows um, the amount of days with rainfall events uh, over 1.25 inches. Um, and the relevance of that number is that Iowa soils can only hold 1.25 inches of water in one day. Um, unfortunately, the amount of days with rainfall events of this nature are increasing, and we've seen a 41% in, 41 increase in these days over the last century. So for farmers like Ray, using cover crops, using terraces, using tile drain, really, really important for him to be able to manage that kind of you know, extreme event on his farm. I also spoke with Noah Williams. He's a farmer in Oregon in a dryland area in the Dalles. He, uh, he is in a winter wheat production system and the control, sort of the typical practice that he uses is a Ken Fallow. <coughs> Um, he farms on 2,800 acres and has recently, just uh, a few years ago, started using cover crops. And now he's up to planting about 60 acres of those cover crops each year. And check out this mix. So this is what he plants on his farm. Um, and I asked him why he chose to do such a diverse mix, especially starting out as a new, new farmer with cover crops. 
and he really wanted a lot of benefits. So he was really interested in attracting pollinators and good predatory insects to his land. He also was really interested in getting a grazing benefit. But he also was interested in preventing uh, wind erosion. He doesn't really have problems with water erosion because he gets 12 to 14 inches of water a year, and it's usually during the time when he's growing his cash crop anyway. Um, but wind erosion is a huge problem because he's in the Columbia River Gorge, which also is home to the wind surfing capital of the world. Uh, but that's not super great when you're farming to have that much wind. So he planted this mix for those benefits. And what uh, he's seen is that he definitely has that reduced wind erosion risk. When I was talking to him, he was explaining to me how he feels like the biomass of the cover crops when it's growing, much as it slows down the, the speed of water flowing over the ground, it'll slow down the wind speed as the wind kind of goes over the surface of the residue and then reaches sort of the, the soil surface. It'll be slower at the soil surface. Um, and Noah's been working with Garrett Dyke in NRCS in Oregon to conduct some tests on the water in Noah's soil because a lot of farmers in situations like Noah's are hesitant to plant cover crops because they're pretty kind of nervous about what that will do to their, the water in their soil. And they're already in a dryland area. They need all the water they can get. Luckily, Noah and Garrett have been working on on this, and they found that the soil under the cover crops, as compared to the soil under the chem fallow, have supported root growth beyond Noah's plow pan, which is about at six to eight inches. Um, and so this really shows that the cover crops have reduced the compaction on Noah's fields. Um, the cover crop trials also see immediate infiltration of water when water, um, when it rains. And the, the control, the chem fallow, really sees a little bit of ponding before water even begins to start percolating into the soil layer. And then the cover crop fields also pick up moisture at depths of one to two feet, whereas the control does not. So we're seeing that root zone really be charged with water. And Noah calls this his battery, his storage of water for, for the next growing uh, period. So all of these things have water quality implications. By increasing infiltration and reducing soil loss, we're really doing a lot to prevent the displacement of sediment and nutrient, as, as uh, Tom and Jim told us, the displacement of nutrients to waterways. So we're really working to improve our water quality by taking these measures on our farms. And so I'd like to leave you with some takeaways. Um, the first is that Yes, cover crops are proven to prevent soil erosion. So you can keep saying with confidence that that is a benefit of cover crops. Um, and they also increase rainfall infiltration, which can ultimately improve water quality. Farmers across the country, from Oregon to Iowa, are seeing this on their own fields. And to truly achieve these benefits, the best management strategy is to really maintain residue cover and root growth, living root growth, all year round and also to have minimal soil disturbance. And so um, back to the superheroes, I really think, you know, in conclusion, we should acknowledge who the true superheroes of the soil are. And these are farmers and ranchers like Ray and Noah, and researchers and conservationists working with them to conserve our soil resources. So thank you, Noah, Garrett, and Ray, for your stories and your research. And also, I wanted to give a shout out to Rob Myers and Tom Casper, who have provided guidance and help with me throughout this process of doing this research. Um, and then I wanted to tell you all that there are resources available at Sarah's Cover Crop Topic Room for you on this topic. So all of the work that I did in that uh, review, I, I looked at other factors as well. That is all cataloged for you in um, some fact sheets, which I also have some copies up here in front um, that you can, you can look at that. And I'm happy to share any research with you that you need. I also like to say, if any of you are educators, we have cover crop PowerPoint templates that you can download for your own presentations. Um, and we have soil health and cover crop illustrations and images. A lot of the images in my PowerPoint are from our free online database that you can download and use for your own educational purposes. So feel free to check that out. And then I just wanted to say thank you so much.